Hey, what's up everyone? This is Silver Slayer. Thank you for tuning into this video. The stars have aligned. The perfect storm is here. Silver prices are surging, but why? This video is going to explain what is going on currently with silver prices and where they're headed for the future because some are speculating $25 silver by the end of the year and there are a couple different things influencing the prices that we're going to talk about. So before we start, make sure to smash that like button. Let's see if this video can get 300 likes. Hit that like button if you love silver. Hit that like button if you're bullish on silver. Also, make sure you're subscribed. You want to tune in daily because I will giving you the freshest, most up-to-date recent news in the world of precious metals, which is definitely going to affect the way you stack and you strategize. So you want to stay informed and this channel will give you the most up-to-date news. So with that said, Let's jump into it. So here's what's behind the perfect storm sending silver prices surging. Now, it's hard to find an asset on more of a roll than silver. On Tuesday, silver for September delivery uh, SI100 rose nearly 7%, the highest settlement since March 2014, and 83% above its March lows. Silver was up in early hours of Wednesday as well. It seems the precious metal has been caught up in the perfect storm. Much of what's driving silver is also driving gold, aggressive monetary policy, financial of fiscal spending, which limits the ability of bond yields to rise. That is sending inflation adjusted or real yields lower, which tend to boost precious metals. Now, I also have an, another article talking about another thing that's boosting uh, silver higher, right? Silver has a unique advantage because not only does it rise from its monetary side, you know, from, from like from Fed overspending, you know, budget cuts, stimulus packages, but it also, but it also benefits from its industrial demand. And, and that's what we're going to go into the second half of this video. So in addition, silver is still cheap relative to gold uh, by historical measures. See, silver is heating up, but the latest catalyst may be well may well be the European Union's 70 750 billion dollar recovery fund which not only marked nearly 30% of spending on environmental initiatives but said funding of other projects has to be in line with Paris climate rec accord furthermore the possibility of EU could issue a so-called green bond may create safe asset providing a reference security for private sector green bond insurance and what green, this green, it, we're going to talk about in the second part. So the catalyst of the recent rally, however, seems to be the fact that the world is aiming for a green recovery with a significant part of the stimulus assigned for environmentally friendly measures, says Blockland. As silver has a wide range of industrial uses, including electronics and solar panels, demand for this metal should rise from this angle as well. We remain overweight commodities as the outlook for both industrial and precious metals looks bright. See, silver has a win-win situation. It's a it, it's definitely a win-win situation with silver because of its industrial factors that gold doesn't have. Silver is so is so intertwined, so intertwined with the economy that when that when the economy's doing well, silver actually goes up because that means there's more production, more more demand for it with business and ele and electronics and cell phones with you know photovoltaic cells for for solar panels there's also silver nanoparticles using you know some are, are trying to actually have a cure for this pandemic with it you know silver is used to purify water it's used for so many things and and when we're talking about 5g technology and electric vehicles especially so silver is used in all these things so when the economy is doing well silver actually does does well but also See, here's the win-win part. When silver, when, when the economy is doing bad, silver also does well because people store their money as a safe haven with gold and silver. So whatever's happening in the economy, whether it's bad or good, silver is going to benefit from it. Unlike gold, where gold is, is strictly tied to just the economy in, in a bad shape because gold is, is a monetary metal. It's only used as a store of value in times of economic uncertainty. So, Silver's price rally has accelerated over the past years, currently trading at $22.65 an ounce. The price has jumped 27% year to day, yet much of the gains, 22% out of the 27, was made in the first three weeks of July. With its dual properties as both industrial and precious metals, silver will continue to benefit from global economic recovery amidst high uncertainty. So 
On the demand side, industrial demand takes up about 50% of the total silver consumption. Silver has, as an industrial metal allows the price to benefit from global economic recovery. The latest report by Market reveals that global manufacturing PMI jumped 7.9 points to 47, the highest since January and June. The index rebounding from the record low of 32.5 in April signals that the worst of the global economy is behind us. Although the pace is divergent among different countries, China's economic recovery has gathered momentum. This bodes well for the silver price as China is the largest consumer of the white metal in terms of industrial demand. See, this is another thing we have to think about. Production and production and demand, right? Because we see, we know that silver is, is, is in a very interesting and attractive spot to a lot of investors, but also a lot of businesses. So not only is money coming in from people like you and I that see the price attractive and want to transfer our money from stocks and bonds and, and cryptocurrency over to precious metals, there's also the big business that as you know we advance into a new tech, technological world. So silver's needed more from both from all angles of the world. And that's only going to push the price higher as we know that production's being cut back as silver supply is diminishing. So here's a global production uh, data. So you were just uh, show, talking about sharp rebounding global manufacturing PMI signals that global production activities are on the way to recovery. Industrial demand takes up about 50% of the total silver consumption. See, silver is used is so for so many things, and it shows industrial silverware, silver prices, photo photography, investment, jewelry, and dehedging. See, a lot of gold is actually used for invest for uh, for jewelry, right? A lot of go uh, gold is used for coinage, for bars for necklaces, rings, earrings, right? But silver is used for all these other things as well. So similar to gold, investment demand for silver is facilitated by its safe haven characteristic as a precious metal. Although the global economy has gradually been improving from the sharp contraction in March, the outlook remains highly uncertain. Concerning the virus, the pandemic, there are reports of resurgence of new cases in different countries such as US, Brazil, and Australia. Risks to growth are skewed to the downside against Against this backdrop, investors are keen on diversifying their portfolios to assets like gold and silver. Meanwhile, global monetary policies are expected to remain accommodative for the years ahead. The protracted low-yield environment has lowered the, the opportunity cost of holding silver, currently standing at an all-time high of 835.5 million ounces. Institutional investors have accelerated their silver holding ETFs since the second quarter of 2020 as the virus has caused severe damage to the world economy. Silver holdings climbed 6.23% in the first quarter of 2020, followed by a sharp rise of 19.8% to 772.74 million ounces. So here's the total silver ETF physical holdings. You can just see this exploding, right? That there's no other word to, besides exploding to look at this chart, right? Especially for a slower moving market uh, that precious metals are in. You know, if we're looking at Bitcoin or, or, or Tesla stock, you know, but, but, but silver is a much different type of market. It's a much slower paced market. But to see them, but to see this, these prices rising like, like Bitcoin or rising like, like Tesla, it definitely shows how much attraction this is gaining. See, physical investment is also expected to increase. According to Silver Institute, purchases, bars, and coins, physical investment are expected to gain 16% year on year in 2020. This should partly offset the drop of jewelry fabrication demand of negative 7% forecast. Silver supplies contributed by mine production, recycling, hedging, supply, and Official sector sale, of which mine production takes up an overwhelmingly 80%. Mine supply has been disrupted in Mexico and Peru, which they actually to they take about 40%, like it says right there. And that's and that's because th this pandemic has put things to a halt, shut down mines, limited workers, and also you know also transporting all this silver. A lot of there's a lot of boundaries, a lot of a lot of a lot of barriers with that as well. So. Uh, amidst government's restrictive measures to curb the spread of the virus since early March, although operations have largely resumed, it takes time for production to return to full capacity. So there, there's so many different things affecting silver, and it really is the perfect storm. Everything that I was saying in the last couple of years had to happen for silver to really boom is, is happening, right? And we talk about $50 silver, and I think that is still extremely low given the circumstances we're in right now. $50 silver was here in 2011 
And, you know, there was stimulus going out back then from the 2008 credit crisis or the financial crisis. There was billion dollar stimulus back then. Now we're in trillion dollar stimulus. Also with a global pandemic on our hands. So things are much, much more severe, much, much more extreme. Plus we have a 2020 presidential election on our hands, which is going to make things even more controversial and more uncertain. When this happens, I think that's going to be the cherry on top to really put the nail in the coffin. And, and, and the thing is, is, is what happened in 2011 why didn't silver keep going up? Because I was reading a lot of articles. I made a video a couple months ago, reading articles from that time frame and seeing where people are like, what people thought of the markets. And most people thought silver was going to keep going higher. So a lot of people were burnt because they didn't sell at that top and they, they held on and held on a, a little too long. So what happened? Well, there wasn't enough stability. There wasn't enough support. Well, nowadays we have the support because of the supply and demand factors. So if silver hits $50, I think it's going to stay there. It's going to stay there and, and then go higher. We don't want it to happen overnight. The if, if, if $50 silver comes tomorrow or even the next week, it's going to crash. If it goes up, 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 it's going to crash, crash, crash. You want it to go up a little bit, then fall. Have a correction. Have some sell, selling, you know, have some dips. That's healthy for the market. Like right now with prices this high, I wouldn't be surprised if silver dropped back down to like $20, you know, and, and that's not bad. A lot of people are thinking that's bad, but that's actually healthy for silver. If you want it to stay at these high prices and not go back down to $15, $16, there has to be some dips. That That's normal. That's healthy. So anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up here. The link to these two articles will be in the description if you want to check them out yourself. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. It's the best way to support the channel. With everything going on right now, you definitely want to be subscribed so you stay so you stay informed on, on, on a day-to-day -day basis of what's going on. Because I post two to three videos a day giving you the newest, latest, freshest information on precious metals, what's going on, how you should how you should stack, how you should invest, and, and where prices are headed. So with that, with that said, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.